Hi there and welcome to the channel and in this video I'll be talking about Mary Elizabeth Braddon's 1862 sensation novel Lady Audley's Secret. I read it in this Penguin English Library edition which I don't recommend. No introduction, no notes. Okay so I guess we should begin by saying a few words about our author and the sensation novel as a genre. Mary Elizabeth Braddon is what I suppose we would call a hack writer. She produced over 80 novels, of which Lady Audley's Secret was by far the most commercially successful. She followed it a year later with another sensation novel, Aurora Floyd, which I haven't read yet, but I hope to get round to this year. And in the 1860s and 70s, along with Wilkie Collins, Charles Dickens' great friend, she was one of the two principal exponents of the sensation novel. So what was this short-lived genre all about? There are four principal elements to a sensation novel, the first of which is melodrama. These are stories full of passion and suspense in which fiendish villains prey upon innocent victims and where the writer lingers almost lovingly over the sufferings of the characters and where ultimately a hero arrives to save the day. Secondly, these novels feature crimes frequently of a shocking and scandalous nature, murder of course being the foremost example, and in doing so they draw upon the tradition of the Newgate novel, of which Dickens' Oliver Twist is a famous example. However, they differ from this kind of novel because they introduce the theme of detection. Now it's not until 1868 and Wilkie Collins' The Moonstone that this detection is undertaken by a police officer. Instead, we have amateur sleuths looking to find the truth. In The Woman in White, for example, it's an art teacher. And in Lady Audley's Secret, it's a barrister. Thirdly, there are gothic elements. It's not unusual to encounter the supernatural in these stories. Many of the most suspenseful scenes take place at night in gloomy, lonely settings, a crumbling, sprawling country house during a violent storm, all of which serves to crank up the suspense to the highest degree possible. The final element constitutes a break with the classic Gothic tale, which is set in another place and in another time, because in the sensation novel, it's all about evil in the here and now. It's all about evil penetrating the domestic sphere. Okay, so that's what constitutes a sensation novel. Now let's focus on the example we have before us, Lady Audley's Secret. Now, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to go too deeply into the story. I wouldn't wish to spoil it for any would-be readers. Instead, I'll summarise the opening two very brief chapters. Okay, firstly, an elderly aristocrat, long widowed, surprisingly remarries a beautiful young woman who quickly becomes the talk of Essex. This is Lady Audley. Second, cut to a young man on a steamship returning to England after three years in Australia, during which time he's made a fortune in the gold mines. He deserted his wife and infant child before he left and in his time away has never seen fit to send them a line about what has happened to him. He's wondering what kind of reception he'll get when he lands back in England. These two plot strands are twined together to generate the action of this novel. There is a mysterious disappearance of one of the central characters and it's Robert Audley, a barrister, the nephew of the elderly aristocrat who takes it upon himself to play detective. There, that's enough. I'll just touch briefly upon some of the merits and defects of this novel and then it will be time to bid you farewell. I would identify three principal merits of Lady Audley's secret. First, and perhaps most importantly, it's an absolute page turner. I've read many three volume Victorian novels and I have to say, volume one of this is definitely the most exciting. The chapters are extremely brief. The shocks are coming thick and fast. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Secondly, there is a knowing humour at work. You won't read very many pages before you discover this for yourself. But my favourite moment comes very much towards the end of the novel when a doctor attends and he makes a brief comment that completely deflates the entire action of this novel. I found that very amusing. Lastly, 
The detective theme is well handled. It's very exciting wondering where the next clue will be found. Okay, as for defects, it gets a little baggier as volumes two and three rumble on. I don't know why some of the descriptions are overly long, but they are, and that is a slight defect. Secondly, the characterization is rather weak. And thirdly, and this is a defect that you can correct, I did not like the final three chapters. And I believe this is a much better novel if you stop reading after chapter six of volume three. That sounds ridiculous on the face of things, but for anyone who reads or has read this novel, just let me know in the comments if you agree with me. Okay, so there we have it. A wonderful sensation novel. All that remains now is for me to bid you farewell. So until the next time, be safe, be strong, nanu nanu.